got a mandate on your life and you're not trying to listen to what God has to say because you're so busy, but I guarantee you. a mandate on your life and you're not trying to listen to what God has to say because you're so busy but I guarantee reading this morning is coming from Isaiah the 26th chapter the 20th and the 23rd verse come my people enter thou into my thou chamber and shut thou doors about thee hide thyself as it were for a little while a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquities. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. In a moment of prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, Father God, we thank you for your love, kindness, and your tender mercy. Father God, thanking you for being such a good God. Father God, we realize and right now that we live in in troubled times. Father God, we got a, a pandemic in our midst. And Father God, we got leaders in our nation really, Father, are not equipped. But we know that we can call upon your name, Father God. For you done told us what to do. Father God, you said in your word if my people who are called by my name will honor themselves and seek me, I will heal their land. Father God, if it ever been a time, the whole world needs you right now. Father God, so many people are in bereavement, lost friends and loved ones. Father God, we ask that you touch them right now. Father God, for they are standing in the need of prayer. And Father God, we ask that you touch all the ministers that are standing in your name, preaching your holy word. Father God, Pastor Anderson this morning, Father God, touch him right now, Father God. For we know that the only way that we can make this a better place 
Father God, it's good to know the scripture, but it's better to obey your commandments. Father God, we got so much molestation. Father God, we had looting, riding, child molestation. Father God, we asked it, Father God, that you look down on the children. I seen in the news, Father God, where a father stood up and said that little children during this pandemic, Father God, are being mentally and physically abused. A little seven-year-old child committed suicide. Father God, touch us right now. Father God, we need you. And Father God, we ask that you look down on the children, Father, as they get started back into school. Some at home and some is going into the classroom, Father God. And day by day, they getting tested positive with that pandemic. Father God, let the teachers, the school superintendents, and our leaders, Father God, put the safety of these children first, Father God. Father God, we got a president. Say he wants the children back in school, but he won't send his child in school. Father God, look down and have mercy upon us, Father God. We know that you are a problem solver. Father God, we know if we pray and call you right, you will hear and answer our prayer. Father God, we ask this morning that you look down on the Mount Calm family. This is not being selfish, Father God, but we ask that, I ask that you just look down on our church member, Father, and touch him right now. Not only Mount Calm church member, Father, but the people all over our nation, Father God, in their churches, in their synagogue, Father God. Touch him right now, Father God, because I know all over the world it is bereavement, Father God, because this pandemic is real, Father God. People don't want to obey just a little simple thing that might help us, Father God. People in supermarkets pulling out guns on people because they have to put on a mask. Father God, I've seen a young lady throw an old lady down in the middle of the supermarket, Father God, because she just asked her politely to pull up her mask. But Father God, I know that one day, and right now, Father God, people just don't realize, and right now, that they just don't fear you, Father God, but your wrath is upon this world, Father God. We see the hurricane, the tropical storm, the fires, the burning, the looting, way people killing, Father God. We got people walking the street, but they're killing one another, Father God. But Father God, we know that we need you. You are a prayer heaven God. Father God, it is my prayer that you look down on this rebellious nation, Father God. Father God, look down on the ones that are obedient, Father, disobedient, Father. Touch them right now, Father God. Turn them around, Father God. Because, Father God, we need you if it ever been a time that we need you. It was a song written years ago when I was a youth. It said, what the world need now is sweet love. And, Father God, it looked like hate done took over, Father God. But, Father God, we know that you are love. And, Father God, if it be your will, just reach down on us this morning and touch us all over this starving nation, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God.
stepped in the water. I stepped in the water. I stepped in the water. Deep down in that water. Deep down in that water. Deep down in that water. But I stepped in the 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 water. But I made You know the Lord has 
This portion of today's service is where you can participate remotely. It's now time for tithes and offering. Here at Mount Calm during this COVID-19 pandemic, we have several ways for you to donate. You can donate electronically via Cash App by entering our Cash App tag to dollar sign Mount Calm Church. You can send your offering via mail to P.O. Box 376 Coldwater, Mississippi, 38618, or in person Sundays at Mount Calm Church from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. If you're una unable to do one of the following listed, 
or feel unsafe leaving the comfort of your home, please reach out to us and a brother of our deacon board will contact you. I got a mandate on your life and you're not trying to listen to what God has to say because you're so busy, but I guarantee see you that he's going to bring something in your life that he can get your attention. Father, in the name of Jesus again, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done for us, Father. Continue to strengthen us as we take life's journeys, ups and downs, Father God. Thank you for the time now for being able to express your word, Father God. Hide me behind the desk. Let others be able to hear and see what you have for them today, Father God. Father God, let this word be able to encourage someone, not discourage anyone. Father God, we thank you for what you have for us today. Father God, teach your people and not be able to disencourage your people. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. Song said, I came to tell you. The other song said that I still have joy. I want y'all to get that. I came to tell you that I still have joy. After all that I've been through, I came to tell you that I still have joy. Amen. Just for a few minutes, I'm glad you all are watching us this morning. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, just for a few minutes, we go to Luke chapter 7, the King James Version. Luke chapter 7, uh, verses 18 through 23. Luke chapter 7, verses 18 through 23. The same thing that's in my book, same thing that's in my pad, my phone, is the same thing that you should have unless you've torn it out or deleted it. Luke 7, 18 through 23 says, and the disciples of John showed him all these things, and John calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we? For another. And in that same hour, he cured many of them infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answered, said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the leopards are cleansed and deaf hear, the dead are raised to the poor, the gospel is preached. In verse 23, my conclusion, and, lo and blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Jake says, when he sent the disciples to go to Jesus, verse 19, he says, and John calling unto him two disciples, sent him to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Just for a few minutes, I want to take this text and say, are you the one? Are you the one? Y'all know that preaching and amen, it goes together. What God has joined, let no man put asunder. Are you the one? Just got a question. Have you ever been in so much pain or so much confusion that forces you to start looking for answers? I mean, have you ever been in so much pain that you started questioning who you are? You question who God is? I mean, you start to wonder, should I throw in the towel and just give up on everything or should I just tough it out? So you start looking for information. You start looking for help. 
and you start looking for answers. That's, that's what's going on in this text. John is confused. He receives clear revelation of the identity of Jesus, and then he declares, or he, he is dedicated his life to tell others to trust and follow God through Jesus. And now he finds himself in Herod's jail. Get the picture, get the picture. While the ministry of Jesus is growing, John's life is dimming. And in the end of and, and, and in the end, he decided to send a few of his disciples to verify the identity of Jesus. Again, he finds himself in prison, and he sends word to Jesus, and he cleans it up when he sends the word. He sanitized the word, because I think this is what John really wanted to say. He, he wanted to say, what about me? I, have you forgotten about me? It was me that paid the way. It was me that set. It was me that set things in order for you. It was me that set things up for you. H here I am in jail, locked up for serving you, and feeling like all that I've done was in vain. Here is the prophet who said once he was once so fierce. And now he is so weak. He is in the damp dungeon of Herod, and he need answers. Listen to the man handled. Listen, listen, he is, he is in the dungeon. He's in the dungeon of Herod, and he really need some answers so much. So if you listen to the man, he handled him. He used to wear camel hair suits, and he used to eat wild locusts, and now he's depressed inside of a dungeon. He has to go from being famous, and now he's wondering if his life even matters to anyone. Here he is. I, I'm, going, I'm going to get a few amens here. Here it is. He's now quarantining when he used to be outdoors. Somebody going to get it in a minute. He's used to wearing these fine suits and eating whatever he wants to eat. Now he's in the dungeon. It's just like us. We used to be able to go out in the street and do whatever we want to do. But now we are quarantining because we are dealing with so much stuff in this world. Uh, he is at an emotional low. And here is my question to all of you that are listening right now. Have you ever found yourself wondering why it seems like other people are getting blessed and you're not? Maybe I asked the wrong people. Let me ask you again. Have you ever felt that everybody else around you are getting blessed and you are not. I, I know you don't want to admit it. That's fine. I admit it myself. Sometimes I feel like I go to church more than anybody else. And I'm trying to figure out why I feel like I'm committed more than everybody else. But it seems like everybody else around me is getting better things in life than I. Sometimes it makes me wonder what is wrong with me. Every now and then when you look at the struggles of an African American, when you look at what we have dealt with on a daily basis, uh, when you get pulled over for DWB, y'all know that driving while black. When you get arrested just because you stand up for your own rights. When you look at Breonna Taylor, who still has not found out who her murderers was and they've never been arrested yet. When you look at a young man that was shot in a neighborhood, shot to death in a the subdivision, when you look at the Kenosha shooting of a black man seven times in the back just because he wanted to get in the car with his children, when you see the white man carrying an assault rifle and walk right past the police and they do not, nothing about it, 
when you hear or when you look at them trying to cancel universal health care, when you look at the struggles that we've been dealing with in black America, the question is, where can I find an answer? Uh, answers, answers, answers. We all need answers for the things that we're dealing with on a daily. And when you are a Christian, you will find yourself sometimes wondering. And that's why there are many of our young people today, they're wondering if Christianity stuff is really real or is if it really is worth it. Because, uh, all the other things that was going on in the world, they saw mama praying, and they saw grandmama praying. So when grandmama prayed and when mama prayed, it seemed like things were getting done and things were getting solved. But now the young people are praying, and they still see bigotry. They still see violence. They still see prejudice. They still see this coronavirus. They still see all this sickness. If this is the God that we serve, the young people want to know where is God now? Uh, here, here's the honest part. Let me tell you the honest part. The honest part is the enemy gets into your head and he makes you start to wonder about yourself and the God that you serve. Uh, uh, make you start to question God and the love God has for you. He will say, he will say this to you, if God loves you like he say you do, or like he say he does, or like he claim he does, well, why he won't get you out of this dilemma that you're in? The enemy says, well, well why are you sick then if you serve a mighty God? The, the enemy says, why you don't have no money if you serve a mighty God? I, I want to ask y'all a question. Have you ever been in a prayer closet? Maybe I'm talking to the wrong people this morning. But have you ever been inside of your prayer closet? And when you start talking to God all about your struggles that you are going through, you started to wonder, is God really listening to you because because the enemy tells you, why are you on your knees? Because tomorrow you're going to have more problems than you have today. But I want to tell the enemy, get me behind me, Satan, because I'm moving. I'm moving forward. Uh, we got to be honest with ourselves. Uh, we're going to go through some things in life. Uh, it says, Right now, I know, I know, I want to help somebody right here. Listen, it makes sense when, I, when, when it makes sense when you're stronger and you don't need to be getting any better than that because you're not weaker. You want to be stronger than what you are, but it makes sense if you're not weak and you're not going to pray to be stronger because you're already stronger. Well, well I better not be able to pray to God when I want to be better because I'm not worse. So when you're not worse, you're not going to pray to God. So what I'm saying is when we're at our worst or when we're at our lowest or when we're at our weakest, that's when we pray to God. So the enemy gets into your head and say, wait a minute, when you had all the money you needed, where was your God? When you had all the health you needed, where was your God? When you was on the top looking down, where was your God? The enemy is trying to tell you that you didn't pray to God when you had everything in order. Why are you trying to pray to God now? The enemy tries to confuse you. Uh, because every now and then I wonder, because somebody said, I didn't smoke, but I still got cancer. I didn't drink, but my kidneys are still going bad. Somebody else might say, I thought I raised my children the right way, but they are going crazy. I went to work on time every day, and they still laid me off. God, I just need some answers for my questions. Uh, I began to think back uh, to my school days back in, in the 80s and 90s. Y'all didn't think I was that old. But listen, they call every math equation a math problem. Now, I don't know. 
if they don't change that in 2020. But in the 1980s, they called, somebody said this a long time ago, they called the math equations a math problem. Rather, it was algebra, geometry, calculus, trigonometry, doesn't matter. Whatever the equation was, they called it a math problem. Here's what I want you to know. Every problem has an answer. Some of y'all didn't get that. We, we, we're, we're all around looking for answers to all the problems that we have. But I want you to know that every problem has an answer. Some, some were harder than others. And some took longer to solve than others, but all of them have an answer. Uh, because sometimes when you go to take that problem, that math problem, it took you a little longer than somebody else. The teacher may have gave you a little longer time to solve that than somebody, than somebody else. So sometimes it's a little harder than others. So there are moments or there were moments in school. When I, did, when I got the answer wrong, so I had to revisit the problem. So I won't keep failing the test. I hope this don't go over your head. I have to keep revisiting the problem. We, we got a lot of problems in this world. I have to keep revisiting the problem so I wouldn't keep failing the test. I had to pass the test in order to get to the next grade level. What I'm trying to say, I'm glad y'all keep asking me what you're trying to say. What I'm trying to say is it does not matter what problems you have in life, there's always an answer. I understand that it may not come when you want it to come. It may not be right. I understand that we may fall every now and then, but it's up to us to get up in line and go revisit the problem until you get an answer for what you're dealing with. So I want to tell somebody that's listening to us this morning, whatever problem you have, take your problem to God so he'll be able to answer what you are dealing with. Oh, you have to be determined. Uh, you don't have to be defeated. You just need to be determined. You just need to be determined. I need a few people to say, whatever I'm going through, I am determined. Y'all didn't say it like you mean it. Say, whatever I'm dealing with, I'm going to be determined. I'm determined to find the answer. I'm determined to come out on top. I'm determined to be the head and not the tail. I'm determined to have a smile on my face. I'm determined to be on top of the ground. I'm determined to be healthy. I'm determined to be all that God wants me to be. I am determined. Listen, being defeated is a temporary situation. Let me say, I don't want to miss you. Listen, being defeated is a temporary situation. Now, giving up makes it permanent. But if you are determined, you will not be defeated. Let me say it again. Being defeated is a temporary situation. Giving up makes it permanent. But if you are determined, you will not be defeated. Listen, what happened to John while he was in prison? Let me give you a few things, a few quick things, and then we all going to take communion together. Listen. Number one, listen, be careful how you process outside commentary. Or you may say outside news or outside gossip. Be careful how you process outside commentary. Text says, after hearing these things, John was provoked. He was provoked, so he says, I need y'all to go ask. Jesus, is he the one or should we look for someone else? 
Now, the question is provoked based upon what John heard. Well, he, what, what did he hear? He heard that Jesus healed the son of a centurion. He heard that Jesus gave a widow woman her dead son back alive. Now, if you notice, it says the disciples of John. You read the same thing I read. It said the disciples in verse 18. It says the disciples of John. You will discover that in the previous two stories of healing, it says that there were two different groups of people at the healing. The disciples of Jesus and the crowd. The disciples of Jesus and a crowd. And in that crowd of people were at least some of the disciples of John. Are y'all with me? They said they have seen what Jesus did and they had brought what all, all or what I call all their gossip or commentary or news of confusion. They brought it to John. They watched Jesus do all this healing in this crowd, and, and they say, this ain't what John told us Jesus was going to be about. And so they came to John, who is in jail, and they gave him some confusion. I'm about to help somebody, because y'all looking at me like, like, y'all looking at me like, what are you talking about? I'm looking at you like, why you ain't saying amen? Listen, I'm about to help you. Listen, when I'm in a difficult situation, John is in jail, and somebody done brought him some news. Paint the picture. Listen, when I'm in a difficult situation, and when I'm thinking or when I'm not thinking straight, I need not only, or I need to be careful who it is that I'm listening to and what it is that I'm listening to because there is a whole lot of people whose conversations is nothing but confusion. Y'all got to be careful that when you are going through the trials of life that you're not listening to certain things that people say because it can sometimes confuse you more than what you already were. Uh, some people don't even know that they are on an assignment or on an assignment to make you stressed out. Why do you say that? I said because these were John's disciples. So they loved John. So again, some people that are in your life, they don't know that they're on an assignment to make you stressed out. I mean, they may love you because, again, these are John's disciples, so they don't know that they're bringing you confusion. They don't know that they're bringing you something that's going to stress you out. They didn't know, but we have to be careful to have a spirit of discernment. Uh, and see, they came back to John uh, while he was in jail, and they were free. Watch this. He was in jail, and they were free. So if you are healthy and I'm sick, or if you're rich and I'm broke, if you have a job and I'm jobless, if you have a roof over your head and I don't, it's hard for me to understand where you are in life because I'm not free, because I'm broke, because I don't have a place to stay. So when you bring me the news that you have, it's harder for me to process that because of what I'm dealing with. So we got to be careful of what people bring to you. Uh, second thing here, I'm moving. Listen, be careful of faulty criteria for faith. Uh, John said, go ask Jesus, are you the one or should we look for another? John was confused because the report said he received about Jesus. He was, it was unexpected and it was incomplete. They were unexpected because of his expectations. Don't let your expectations 
limit God. Let God be all you need him to be in your life. Don't just call God on a Sunday and you disconnect the phone call during the rest of the week. Don't just call God when you get sick and you need him to heal you. Don't just call God when you need money in your pocket. Don't just call God when your car breaks down. We should be on the phone with God every day of the week. It does not matter who you are because we all have problems and we're dealing with this on a normal basis. So we should be crying out to God every day of the week. So we shouldn't limit God because of the expectation that we have. Uh, number three, and I'm getting out of here. Thank y'all so much for listening to us this morning. Listen, uh, number three, uh, don't settle, but seek. Don't, don't settle, but seek. Listen, he sent the disciples to Jesus with the question. What, 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 are, you, what are you saying? It went over some of y'all head. Listen, after all the rumors he heard about Jesus. What John did was, he didn't ask the disciples, what did he do? Or who is this man? He sent the disciples to go ask Jesus himself, who are you? Or are we, or should we look for somebody else? He didn't ask them. He sent them to ask the only one. They can answer the question. He didn't say, why? Oh, 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 I'm in jail, and why are you not trying to get me out? He, he didn't send him with that question. He, he's not crying and said, I need clothes, and I need food to eat, and I'm feeling bad. Can you come and save me? He didn't send him with that question. No, he is going to the person himself. What are you, what are you trying to say? Uh, the lesson from John. Let me tell you the lesson from John, and I'm going to sit down and listen. The lesson from John. He said, I'm not going to ask all of these other folks that can't answer my question. Because some of these other folks really don't want to give me the right answer. They're going to tell me what they want me to know. And not give me all I really need to know. He said, I'm not going to ask all of these other folks that can't heal me. When my body needs healing, I'm not going to ask all of these other folks. And when I need a drink of water, I'm not going to ask all of these other folks. I'm not going to ask these people that can't turn water into wine. And I'm not going to ask all of these people that can't be a bridge over trouble water. I'm not going to ask all of these people that won't be a mother when I show need a mother. Yeah, I'm not going to ask none of these people that can't pull me out when I'm burning down. I'm not going to ask all of these people that won't die for me. I'm not going to ask anybody else that won't do nothing for me. If you can bring me bread, if you can bring me water, if you can bring me shelter, then I'm calling your name. When my body got sick, I called on Jesus. Is there anybody here? Know that God will, God will. Anybody know that God will? He'll hear your cry.
If you know he shot good, if you know he been good, shot better, shot better, shot better. I'm getting a new job. I'm getting a new house. I'm getting healed. I'm getting clothes. I'm getting a place to stay. Shout better. Shout better. Is there anybody here? If you want it, say yeah. Said he had. If you know God been good, let me hear you shout yeah. Shout yeah. Ah, ah, yes, sir. Hey, I know he's all right. He's been better to me. God is good. God is good. God is good. Listen. Listen very quickly here, and we're going to go. Um. We have so many things that's going on in life. And we all go to the wrong place looking for these answers. And when we know that the Lord has already given us a revelation on what we need to do or where we need to be, then we try to find somebody else for confirmation. The Holy Spirit should be your only confirmation. Because when you look with confirmation through people, they will stir you in the wrong way. Just because they don't want you to have what God has for you. So they'll tell you some stuff that you don't need to know. Or they'll tell you some stuff that'll keep you from getting the blessing that God wants you to have. So we got to be able to listen to God's voice. Notice these people in the Bible. These Beloved disciples of John was confusing him. And when you're at your lowest place in life, somebody is going to come and make you even lower and then where you are. Only because you're looking for answers. Your back is up against the wall and you're going to need somebody to help bring you out. Some people may give you the wrong answers. Keep praying. Keep trusting God. Uh, listen, real quickly here, and I'm going to pray, and we're going to dismiss. Um, we see that all the stuff that's going on in this world, we got to continue to pray. we got to continue to ask God. we got to continue to be able to trust God, to be able to bring us out of these things that we're constantly dealing with. I know we want to keep matters and put matters in our own hands and be able to do something about it because the government is not doing anything. But I read in the Bible, the Bible says that God said that vengeance is mine. So if we can pray and put it in the Lord's hand, then the Lord's wrath will come on, come down on who it needs to come down on. So if we continue to pray, we know the Christian folk know that God said that vengeance is mine and he'll be able to take care of it. He'll make your enemies your footstool. He'll, he'll, footstool. he'll do everything we need him to do. We just got to be faithful to him and let him do it in his own time. Because when God does it, it's permanently done. When we do it ourselves, we got to keep going over and over and over it again just to make sure it's done right, to make sure it's done right. Put it in the Lord's hand and let him do it. And lastly, you want to thank everybody that continue to come out, continue to watch our service, continue to be with us. Uh, we want to thank our musicians. We want to thank our praise team. We want to thank our guest ministers, Robinson. We want to thank all of our social media team that's continue to be able to put our service online so you to be able to continue to watching us. We thank everybody for being together in this time because right now, is when it really matters because if Satan is so high, we got to be able to stick together because I say the best foot forward is together. Say that again. The best foot forward is together. If we're not together, Satan has done this job. We got to be together in everything that we do. Let's bow our heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus again.
Thank you for this day. Thank you for this word. Thank you for the, the people that are listening to us this morning. Father God, we need you to touch everybody all over this land, Father God. We understand that we're dealing with so much, Father God. It seems like we want to throw in the towel every now and then. We just want to give up on life. We want you to come and rescue us real soon or sooner than later because we don't want to deal with everything that's going on in this world but now is the time for us Christians to get together to hand lock hands to hand elbows to elbows and get on our knees and tell God God you are our savior God you are our answer God you are our healer God you are our way maker so right now Father God we're opening our hands to you we're opening up our arms to you asking you to come in and sit with us asking you to come in and be with us Father God we want you to walk with us we want you to talk with us we want you to just be all around us because we know that the trials of this world are too much for us to handle so we're going to give our troubles to you so you can handle them Father God. We need you this morning Father. Not only today we need you throughout the week Father. We need you as we come back into worship on next Sunday. As we go up and down the dangerous highways Father God we understand that as we look over our shoulders we see danger. As we look behind our heads we see danger but we need you to be there with us. Father God be the pilot as we drive our cars. Father God, we'll be the backseat rider and dare not tell you how to drive. Father God, we'll be there as long as you be there with us, Father God. Guide us and take us where you need us to be. Father God, dismiss us from this place, but never from thy presence. These are other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for tuning in to our service this morning. Same time, same place next week at 10 a.m. Thank you all so much. Be blessed.